Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Coming at you today with something small. Actually, something micro. Specifically, the Cold Steel Micro Recon 1 keychain knife. And there it is give you guys a good look at the box makes for a nice stocking stuffer obviously not for children and this is a very small knife it's definitely keychain sized now for those of you who have been with me for a while you probably remember my video from about 10 months ago called Top 5 Inexpensive Keychain Carry Knives. Well, this little guy definitely wasn't featured on there. There's a good reason for that. Because this guy is not inexpensive. The most expensive knife featured in that video 10 months ago was $16. This guy, average price, right around just under 30. Let me make that clear. 30, 30, not 13. Yep, just under $30. So what makes this little guy so special that it's so incredibly expensive? Well, it's not the materials used. What makes it special is this right here. That is Cold Steel's triad lock. Cold Steel claims it's the absolute strongest locking mechanism currently made on the market. And from my experience, I would say that they are telling the truth. This is the lock mechanism used on a bunch of different Cold Steel knives. And if you've seen their six-inch folding monsters that lock open, yeah, those are locking open with triad locks. And let me be specific. When I say six-inch folding monsters, I mean just the blade on those knives are six inches. And if you own one of those, you know how horribly difficult it is to disengage the lock mechanism because that's how strong the lock mechanism is. Now here on this little guy, it looks like a traditional rocker lock or top lock, but it looks as though it's broken here where the rear of the blade meets the forward portion. And normally, if you have a traditional top lock knife and you lock it open and you see a gap, yeah, don't use that knife. However, on a triad lock, you're supposed to see that gap right there. Yep. And that's really the reason why this little knife is so incredibly expensive or basically double the price of the most expensive knife that was featured in my video 10 months ago. And to be honest, you really don't need a triad lock on something this small. 
I mean, talk about overkill. This is absolutely overkill. Best way I can describe it, um, imagine trying to kill a small rodent with a nuclear airstrike. Yeah, I got that pesky little, well, yeah, you did. And everything else within quite a few miles. Seriously, a triad lock on the keychain knife. This is just incredible overkill. But maybe you're someone who had a bad experience with a slip joint knife. Maybe you were using a knife that its lock mechanism wasn't built right and the lock failed, blade came down on your fingers, or maybe a traditional slip joint, oops, blade slipped, came down on your fingers. Yeah, a bad experience like that, you know? Something like this, this is your knife right here. Because this thing is built like a tank. And it's, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. If you need a very small keychain-sized knife, blade on here is two inches, and you need an incredibly overbuilt tank-like lock mechanism, this is your knife right here. Now, it is available in different blade shapes. This is the bead blasted spear point. There is a more traditional clip point, as well as a tonto. And yes, these have been made with different handle colors, although black is the easiest to find. And there have even been all black micro recon ones. Let's take a slightly closer look. You have a lanyard hole and also a hole for a split ring. Although, as you can see, it is rather thick in cross section. You'd have to get a slightly bigger split ring than maybe what you would normally consider for an average keychain carry knife, but you can definitely put a split ring through that hole. The grips, well, these are injection molded plastic. Cold Steel refers to their version as Grivex, but yeah, injection molded plastic with a nice brick pattern, and that pattern is functional. It's not for show. It's not aggressive at all, but it is functional. There's your lock release. You've got some jimping here, although even though it looks aggressive, as you can see, part of the lock mechanism actually rises just above the top of the jimping. So this is actually smooth. It looks aggressive. Nope, it's smooth. And down here, you have more aggressive jimping. Now, this is a bit aggressive, but even though it looks squared off, yeah, it's not too bad at all. It will help with grip, but it's not going to take skin off your fingers. And this odd-looking grip is designed specifically for a two-finger hold, and it is excellent in that two-finger hold, although it's also a bit uncomfortable. It takes a little while to get used to, but a 
really good two finger hold, a little bit uncomfortable. Overall though, not really an issue. It does come with dual thumb studs and even though the thumb studs seem perfectly equal, on this side for left-handers, this thumb stud, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it is a little bit biased towards right-handers. This thumb stud sticks out a little bit more than this one on the bottom. The bottom one is for left-handers. Folds very nicely. Uh, no pocket carry clip. As far as opening this knife, I do prefer a pinch grip two-handed. Open it up. Yeah, that's what I prefer. You can, however, definitely open it one-handed, but normally what I like to do is I like to angle knives with thumb studs or blade opening holes or discs in a way that my fingertips wrap around and anchor themselves onto the edge of the pocket carry clip. This one has no pocket carry clip. So for me, a two-handed hold is easier, but yes, if your other hand is occupied, you can carefully open this one-handed. I have seen people flick this knife open. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend it. No, it is, it is just so easy to get your thumb a little too close to that cutting edge when you're flicking it open. So I don't recommend doing that. Although I have seen people pull that off. This is overall a really excellent knife if you live in a very restrictive jurisdiction. A lot of places are not going to make a big deal about a keychain knife, especially one where the blade is just two inches. And again, guys, as usual, you will find specs in the description box below. Be sure to check that out when the video is over. Some might say that this thing is lacking capability. And yeah, that's definitely true to a certain extent. If you're someone who on a daily basis needs a larger knife, well, as good as this knife is, and it's definitely a really good one with a very overbuilt lock mechanism. As good as this little guy is, I mean, the simple fact of the matter is, if you need something on a daily basis for large cutting chores, this little guy is not going to cut it. If you work in an office environment where they still use snail mail, well, you're not going to scare too many people with a very small keychain-sized knife cutting open your mail, cutting some string, maybe cutting a bit of tape to mail out a package to a client, that sort of thing. So office environment, yep, something like this could definitely work if you need a cutting tool in that type of environment. If you're someone who lives in a very restrictive jurisdiction and something like this is going to be street legal, well, okay then, there you go. Or if you're someone who had a really bad experience with a slip joint knife or maybe a different small knife with a lock mechanism that wasn't made properly, 
but you still need a cutting tool for EDC purposes, there you go. So honestly, this little guy definitely gets a conditional recommendation. Very restrictive jurisdictions, bad experience with other knives, or any type of environment, especially a office environment where a small knife isn't going to scare the sheeple too badly, especially if they're your co-workers. But overall, I mean, yeah, it is a really good keychain knife and so lightweight that you don't even need a pocket carry clip. You can just toss this into a pocket as is. So this little guy definitely gets a conditional recommendation from me. Obviously, if you need something that can tackle bigger cutting chores, yeah, this, this isn't it. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please continue to stay safe out there. Unfortunately, it's, yeah, it's still dangerous. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one.